The Lord be with you. Well, I'm very sad to say that this is a tragic day in church history because at 12.34 p.m. the Church of England died. Its General Synod, although divided, voted to accept the proposed blessings for same-sex marriages that our bishops had released only a few weeks ago. Now, our bishops insist that the doctrine of holy matrimony, being between one man and one woman for life, has not yet changed in the C of E, although some have slipped up and said that this is just a stepping stone towards that. I find that to be a disingenuous and ludicrous kind of idea. To say that we have changed the practice but not the doctrine is like saying that I am a vegan but I'm going to eat this pork sausage for lunch and chewing it up and eating it in front of you but insisting that my beliefs of veganism have not been in any way affected by changing my practice of refusing to eat meat. It is hypocritical and it is deeply saddening that our bishops have chosen this course of action and that the Synod has acquiesced to their demands. And all for what? To cave in to pressure from rainbow activists within the C of E? To stave off de-establishment for a few more years? To get to a coronation without much drama? I don't know. But none of that can be worth losing the blessing of God and entering into apostasy by defying his infallible, inerrant word. God is a merciful Lord, but he is not infinitely patient. Scripture is clear. He blesses those who are obedient to him and he curses those who are disobedient. Now, I said earlier the Church of England is dead. It is, in fact, I believe, spiritually now, an apostate church. There may be individual parishes within this uh, denomination that can hold out for a certain period of time if they have adequate financial reserves, an orthodox um, team of lay leaders and an orthodox priest. But how long until your bishop decides that your priest should retire or your priest resigns and the pressure is on constantly to accept these new and strange doctrines? Who will your minister be replaced with in that circumstance. You can see where this is going to go and it's going to get there much faster than people could have ever imagined. I said in a previous video that once these blessings pass, the floodgates will open. More and more doctrinal and liturgical changes will come into the C of E and you won't even recognize it. And it'll become not only, un we'll move from being uncomfortable to be orthodox in the C of E to being untenable. You only have to look at the Episcopal Church in the USA when they passed gay marriage uh, uh, blessings and accepted that clergy no longer had to be chaste and celibate outside of heterosexual marriage. In other words, when they approve sin, they have an anything goes kind of view of the Bible and liturgy. The church in the USA, the Anglican branch of the official Anglican communion is completely apostate. Thank God that GAFCON managed to splinter off a group of very faithful people to form the Anglican Church of North America, the ACNA. And brothers I know in that wonderful group of Christians report to me the persecution they suffered as Bible-believing Anglican Christians before they left the Episcopal Church. The witch hunt was on. It's already beginning now in the C of E. Powerful Rainbow activists have made demands of the Archbishop of Canterbury to create a list of people who teach anything that's considered harmful or offensive to the LGBTQ plus community. What on earth do they deem as harmful and offensive? Well, it's, it's plain as a nose on your face, in my opinion. They deem the orthodox traditionalist view of the Bible and human sexuality to be anathema. It must be cut off and destroyed, and anyone who dares promote it must be punished. Well, you don't have to hunt me down. You don't have to toll through my social media. Here I stand on the word of God. Add me to your list if you must, because I believe marriage is between one man and one woman for life. And all other expressions of sexual intercourse outside of marriage are a grievous sin and an insult to God. And people must repent of all their sins, whether they are sexual or otherwise, and believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. To teach that they no longer need to repent of any particular sin as defined in the Bible is to teach a false gospel. And that's what the Church of England is now promoting openly. 
Sure, the churches won't be emptied overnight, although I already have people in my own flock and friends I know who are leaving almost immediately as this terrible apostasy has been unleashed. But over time, the C of E will wither and die. Although it has huge cash reserves, because just think they found 100 million quid behind the sofa just the other month, it'll be able to hold out for a long time in its largest, most historic buildings, which will become little more than museums, in an echo chamber of leftist liberal clergy preaching their lies over empty pews. It's a time of whittling away, of God separating the wheat from the chaff. Most churches up and down the country within the next 20 years were probably going to close anyway because of the freefall decline. I think that will accelerate now. I believe God's been warning the Church of England for a long time to turn away from leftist ideology and rainbow activism. He's been calling us to come back to the simple, unadulterated, unadulterated biblical gospel of Jesus Christ and to make a stand on the word of God as perfect and authoritative over all Christians. But they've not heeded that warning. They've gone further down the rabbit hole of abandoning God's word. And what a tragedy that our bishops, those who are the inheritors of the mission of St. Augustine, who landed here in 597 to convert the English, have now abandoned that wonderful gospel truth and are now relentlessly pushing the church into a dark place of God's wrath. I don't know the future, but I think it's pretty easy to see. We know where the C of E is going to end up. Irrelevant and discarded by God because of their relentless push to abandon God's word. Well, what do we do now? What do we do as faithful Orthodox Anglicans in this context? I was reminded of, in all of this circumstance, as the news broke today, in my prayers of the second epistle, epistle of Paul to Timothy, uh, chapter 4 and verse 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, extort, and with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves false teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But what are we meant to do? But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. We have an individual responsibility before God to stand firm, to keep watch, to remain dedicated to his word and to our saviour Jesus Christ, no matter the cost, no matter what comes against us. We, as individual Christians, will have to answer to God for what we did, thought and said in this time of testing and trial. And I want to be found worthy. And I believe there are many other Anglican Christians out there who also desire to remain dedicated to Christ. Today is a day of lament, a day of mourning, a day of weeping and of crying out before God over the terrible fate of one of the most beautiful branches of the Christian family. Take time. Take time before God to pour out your heart to him. To let him soothe and bind up the wounds and the heartache that you're experiencing. To sit with you in your grief over the destruction of the C of E. Tomorrow, there's plenty of time for planning. Amen.